In this tutorial, we're going to rig the car assignment. We're going to add some really cool expressions so that we can animate it in three different ways. We're going to bring it to Unreal Engine and test it out. And welcome to another 3D for Dummies. Today, we're going to rig this car. We're going to add a controller for the doors, a massive controller for the wheels. We're going to add a really cool expression for the wheels. We're going to have three different ways of animating the, the wheels. Um, also, let's take a look at the Dropbox link right below. Download it so you can see exactly what's in there. Right? Set the project folder, go to scenes. You want to open this car underscore rig 3D4D underscore zero one. Sorry if it's so complicated. Uh, let's go to assets really quick. You also have uh, an FBX just in case if you want to mess around with uh, substance after to add textures. Everything is material ID'd, perfectly fit from the past tutorials. All right, so if you want to go to script, all right, we're going to have to follow along with this shelf. If you don't know how to install a shelf, that's fine. Copy the shelf rigging in there, right? And go to this address, documents, Maya, 2022, preferences, and shelves, right? So that's PC, documents, Maya, 2022, preferences, shelves. Delete the old rigging shelf and paste the new one. Close Maya, of course, and reopen it. You should have this shelf open. Alright, so let's get started. So once that you install the shelf, just remember that uh, we do save our files using the content browser right here. You see CB? Open it, right? So I did set the project folder so you can see exactly a visual representation of your saved scenes. If you go to scenes, now you have a thumbnail in it. It's a pretty cool feature. I just thought you might want to know exactly that. It's out there. All right. All right. So if you open up the outliner, you will have um, something that's called organization, right? <laughs> a lot of modelers don't really have that sometimes, but if you do work in the industry, you know what, what I'm saying, right? You can catch my grip. All right. So here's the uh, right door. Here's the uh, left door, right? So we're going to create some locators for everything, right? For right door, left door, we have a wheels group, right? And every time I do a tutorial, the guy in the back makes as much noise as possible. It's amazing. All right, so we're going to create locators for these. All right, so the first thing I want to do is uh, select my right door. And on this right door, hit W, right? So clearly see that the pivot is right here. You're going to hit the letter D. D, you're going to move that over here and we're going to make sure that we find the perfect pivot for this door right so you can use a space bar space bar for the top view or the side view as well right so maybe we can find a good location for it here it is i'm going to hit the letter b because mine's on soft selection here it is space bar again let's use the side view here's the top view and on right space bar to switch from one panel to another so once you find the perfect pivot here it is Alright, so maybe we want to find this right here. Right, hit F. Right, you can also use the V key to uh, snap it to a vertice if you like. Right, but me, I'm just trying to find the uh, most perfect pivot I can find possible. Right, so hit the letter D. Use E to rotate and see if this works. Right, so not quite. Right, so let's uh, find a better position right so I found my position I don't want to waste too much time on this tutorial right perfect I want to open up the channel box make sure everything is zeroed out so this will be my pivot yay right so uh, the first thing I want to do also is to uh, save my file hit control s because with Maya this tends to uh, crash quite often but this is a light scene once you have that pivot, I want you to select the local line script, which is right here, L-O-C-A-L-I-G-N, select it. So while the group is selected, I want you to hit that local line script. And what this does, it basically just creates a locator based on your pivot, right? You can also scale it if you like, right? You can also add a new color to it. If you look at red, there's a red script. Awesome. Right, we definitely want to send that pivot to the other side, so we have an asymmetrical um, uh, pivot. So we can use the uh, mirror script. You see how we can work efficiently with this shelf? Do grab it. Right, so now we have it on the other side, and now we have two perfect pivots. 
Right, so let's work on the wheels. The wheels are going to be pretty easy because you can simply just select the four groups, right, under the wheel group and just create a local line script again. Right, so here they are. Select all four of them. You can scale them out. There we go. Perfect. Right, uh, we can add a color. Let's make them red. Here's the red script. Awesome. So now we have everything pivoted and we can create a joint hierarchy. Right, so that'll be the first step. For the next step, we're going to select all of my locators. Here they are, except for these actually, these are fine. But for the wheels, shift select them, right? And let's clean them up, use the all script so that we have some clean transformations right here, right? And uh, I can still scale the locators again. It doesn't really matter, but I want this to be clean, right? Here, right? Translate and rotational values. Let's create some joints, yay. Look at the joint tool and just select it, right? Uh, from the top view, spacebar, spacebar, and then select just one joint. Hit enter, spacebar, spacebar, onto perspective. I know I'm going pretty fast, but this is really pretty simple stuff, right? Take a look at the axis orientation based on your world space right here. You see how your Z's go in, X's go this side. So what we're going to do is just keep the same rotational values. I think it's okay, right? We're going to make sure that we uh, also group my car, shift select the car, create a display layer, name it. Let's call this one car, right? Save it and turn it off for right now, right? So we're going to take the first joint, right? And we're going to add this joint right here. We're going to use the V key to snap it. Hit control D. You hold the V key and snap it to the back. Control D. Hold the V key, snap it back. Control D. And do the same thing again, V, and snap it, right? We want to do the same thing for the car doors as well. Control D and snap it, control D, and snap it, right? This is for a game-based single chain hierarchy, right? This is for game, not movies. Or you can use it for movies if you like, right? We also want to create a joint in the middle, right? So I'm going to hit control D again, and I want to make sure that this is right smack in the middle of the car. So I want to see the car, but maybe at transparency, right? Space bar, space bar. Let's make this right smack in the middle. Awesome. We're going to create one last joint for the back of the car. Right, so this will be our main root skeleton right here. Right Now, the only reason why I wanted to put one in the middle is just, just in case if you would like to make your car kind of like drift or something like that, right? For future preferences, right? So you can add as many... Uh, uh, controllers as possible. All right, so we need to name these correctly. So just make sure that you rename these joints just like the locators, all right? So, all right, I already started with the first one, but why not? This is a car rig tutorial, right? So uh, we're going to select the uh, locator right here. All right, just copy it, right? Select the joints, paste it, and just change the local line, delete it. And instead of group, call it JNT. Right, so just do the same thing for the rest of them. Or simply just hit Control C, copy this, and do the same thing for the other one. Right, so select the back. So this will be just back instead. Instead of front, this will be just back. Right. All right. I'd rather do this with you, so we go step by step. So you're not like, oh, I hate these tutorials. They just skip everything, and I just don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to do that to you. I'm sorry. Right, so back, right, and let's not forget that um, this is the left side and this is the right side. Right, don't get it confused. The prefixes are extremely important for this tutorial because we're going to use a script after, right? So once we have all the wheels named correctly, we're going to call this one center. All right, so car center JNT. And this will be the root skeleton. All right, root. All right, so we have pretty much uh, everything in except for joint five and joint six. 
All right, so this will be your right door, right door JNT, and this will be your left door JNT. All right, we're going to use a really cool script for this one too. Turn on the mesh, make it non-transparent. So now that we have all of our joints, you can turn on the X-ray joint setting. And we're going to make sure that we connect everything. So I think that uh, the main thing that we want to start with is selecting our four joints for the wheels only, right? Shift select the car center joint, which is in the middle right here, not the root. And hit the letter P so that now we have full rotational values right with this one. All right, so the next step is to select that car center joint and shift select the root skeleton and hit the letter P, right? So that now this will be my root skeleton, right? So we're basically going to have also the door joints as well, right? So shift select these two as well. Shift select the center joint and hit the letter P so that now we have everything into a single chain skeleton. Right, and we will have these locators to drive these joints. So, uh, why don't we just get started with the binding for right now? The binding is going to be pretty quick. Uh, to be honest with you, we're going to use a component editor for this one. All right, so let's get started with binding this car. First thing I want to do is uh, select my root skeleton, create a display layer. We're going to call this one root or just skeleton. Right, let's make it red. All right, so we can turn on and off the skeleton. We're gonna select. Oops, we're gonna select the mesh. So let's do this. Shift select all of your groups. Hit Control One. So now we have all of the meshes. Let's make sure that it's uh, selected right here. Right. All right, so let's mark you select all of your meshes. All right, so sometimes you can you work with different binds. All right, so we can definitely work with three binds instead of just selecting everything and add these to uh, the joints. So let's get ready to bind, right? We're going to use some uh, very easy techniques. Select the root skeleton, create a display layer. Let's call this one skeleton. Make it red. Make it shine, my baby. There it is. And for the next one, I would like to just have three binds, right? One bind for the doors, one bind for the wheels, and one bind for the rest of the car. So let's do this. Select both wheels. Wheels group. It's not both. It's just all the wheels group, right? We're going to hit Control-1. Right, deselect everything. Marky you select your wheels. Now I want you to open a hypergraph right here. See that? H G P H. This will open the hypergraph. While this is selected in the hypergraph, hit F. So now you can see exactly where your wheels are, but that's not my concern. My concern is this, right? This is your single chain hierarchy. So while this is selected, hold shift and mark you select. All of your wheel joints right this would allow you to create a bind that's going to be so much more efficient right and we can import multiple binds into unreal engine no problem well probably get a like little bit of syntax error as usual but it works let's go to skin bind skin and let's open up the optional displays and on that make sure you bind to selected joints allow multiple bind poses just in case you never know but hit apply Right, so this will allow you to actually select your joints and have them binded already, right? Without, without not too many issues. Now, if I were to select my wireframe and rotate, yes, it is currently working. All right, so we want to do this uh, also for the two other parts of the car that will be rigged. We're going to select the doors. All right, so let's. Take a look at the outliner again. Right door, left door. Right. 
hit Control one deselect everything marquee select just the meshes not the groups All right so we want to make sure that we uh, also select the joints right so right door joint left door joint and apply right so that now when i select my joint this is it right now we're getting some uh influence right you see that influence right here let's take care of it right now as we speak right so we're going to select this door you're going to hit f8 right and if you're not on vertices mode hit f8 again just in case right mouse click hold and select vertices all right so now my understands that you are currently on vertices all right so you can switch with component and object with f8 See, F8, 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 F8. That's annoying, isn't it? I know. All right, so let's mark you select the door, hit F8, and select all of its vertices. Make sure that you hit Control S to save. You're going to open the component editor right here, CPED. And what this does, basically, it just understands and recognizes all the vertices that you have. And you can watch the old tutorials, but just follow along. Go to Smooth Skins. And under smooth skin, what you're going to do, you're going to add a one influence. You're going to type one on all of these vertices or the left door, because this is the left door. So you're going to select the first vertice, scroll all the way down, shift, select, hold, right? So that now everything is selected and type one. Awesome. So now we can double check and see if this works. Let's go to object mode or hit F8 select the joint again right here and now you'll notice that we no longer have that influence now hard surface models are pretty damn easy to uh actually uh bind just because they're hard surface right we don't have too much organic stuff to deal with so uh we have the wheel set let's double check the wheels again right hit up arrow up arrow key and let's make sure that we add and do the same thing on the component editor let's do one of them i'll pause it and just to show you how the workflow is select the mesh hit f8 right so let's remember this right this is the front left side front left wheel right hit f8 select their vertices and just make sure that everything is added onto front left wheel do the same process right select the first one scroll all the way down shift select the last vertice and type one run this process for the rest of the wheels all right so once you run this process for the wheels right you can double check and see how well this works you can uh, turn on the wireframe right get very close i know that it's blue but just select the joint and rotate all right so now we have full one value influence on these wheels and they're going to work perfectly now we don't really need the doors nor the wheels for right now hit control uh, control h to hide everything we don't need to have this uh skeleton visible either so we're going to go to show none and we're going to turn on the polygons or alt 2 right because we need to select all of this the rest of the meshes and apply the same process we're going to bind it to the center skeleton right so while this is here let's do this again marquee select the leftovers shift select the car center joint right here not the root skeleton the car center joint right here go to bind skid bind open optional display make sure everything is set and hit apply and close this will be the last bind for today right so uh this is pretty straightforward right i can go to show and all so that now we can also uh unhide right the right door group left door group and wheel group hit shift h so that you can have everything back to life welcome back car how you doing Oh, we want to thank Sean Keenan also for this, by the way. Uh, let's also make sure that we have the car non-selective for right now. And we're going to add a parent constraint. 
there it is, to these locators on these joints. So to create a parent constraint, first of all, I'm going to turn off the cart for right now. All right, so we're going to select these locators. Everything is way too red, so I'm going to select these locators, actually all of them, and I'll make them blue. All right, makes more sense. All right, so the process is the locator is the mother, shift select the joint, go to constraint, open the optional display. All right, well, I do have a shortcut in there too, but uh, that's fine. And just uh, make sure that uh, you can follow these default settings right here and hit apply. So do the same thing for the next one. Hit apply or the letter G for all of them. Apply, mother, child, hit G, last action, mother, child, hit G for last action or simply hit apply for the last one mother child hit g last action there it is awesome so all of them are parented you can double check and just make sure that they are parented to each other and if you move the root skeleton this is what's going to happen right so don't be alarmed don't be uh scared for this right so we also want to create uh maybe a locator for the middle one possibly before the future, we're not we're not going to use it for today, but I'm going to put it there anyways, right? So, look align car center, and I'm going to select that locator. Shift select. Uh, you know what? No, we're going to do it. Well, yeah, let's do it. Actually, let's do it. Select that locator. Select the joints and hit apply. All right, so that now we have pretty much everything parented. And let's get ready to have this work. So if I were to select my root skeleton, you'll notice that everything has been locked, which is absolutely normal. So don't be scared. All right. So uh, the next process will be to actually create these constraints and a controller. So let's turn on the car again. We're going to create a basic curve, space bar, front view, right? Just a basic, basic curve. Select it. And we're going to call this one doors. That's it. Just doors. Just one for doors. All right. Just a basic controller for a basic rig. Awesome. All right. So we got that going. Let's uh, use the all script to clean it. Let's call this one doors CTL. All right. We're going to do something that we... Uh, that I always uh, apply for my tutorials and the classes at the LA Film School. Uh, I'm going to actually turn on the display layer right here or the display setting and turn on shapes. That's very important because now we have the transform and the shape visible. So here's what I usually do. Let's open the hypergraph. I know I'm, you're like, oh, why is he opening so many windows? But you need that hypergraph. It's very important for you to have it. Right, I'm going to close the parent constraints, open up the hypergraph, see there it is, right? And this is how we double group our object, right? So to double group object, hit control D, delete the shape, control double left mouse click, and rename that to GRP, right? So we're just going to double group it. Select the control first, shift select the group and hit the letter P so that now this controller has been double grouped, which means no matter where it goes, it's not going to affect the controller. Right, so, and that'll make sense after, no worries. But just double group it, please. For crying out loud, just do it right now. Just do it. Just do it. Okay? I think Shia LaBeouf used to have something like that. Alright, so we're going to select this group now and hit Control D again, so you don't have to double group things again and again and again you're going to scale this group there it is this will be our master controller you're going to rotate it right we're going to call this one let's put negative 90 right here right we're going to clean it up so use the all script now it's clean we're going to call this group what well, this will be our trs controller trs control group control double left mouse click just clean it up that's it 
control double left mouse click on the controller itself let's call this one trs controller all right so double grouped but we didn't do anything too crazy uh, let's make this uh controller red actually let's make it yellow let's make it shine my baby oh yeah let's select the uh, door controller let's make it uh yellow as well don't want to waste too much time now you're probably going to hate me for this please do not shoot me select the trs control group hit control d again we're going to double groups <laughs> we're going to double group double groups that's quite annoying and uh, i want you to scale this out again so we're going to add two controllers control double left mouse click and we're going to call this one move control group right so we have one to animate with this controller and one to move that entire animation right so if you don't do this it would kind of suck if you miss the step move controller so now we're all set hit control shift s to save your work very important car underscore zero two right so for you you might have a different prefix because i'm using my own version right so just make sure you put a zero two and right here on these optional displays again right here thumbnail play blast options these are really great if you want to capture that find a nice little snapshot right it's kind of like a TikTok thing for maya capture it oh my god my car looks so good save it and save as again so that now when you open the content browser right here cb see that now we get these really great thumbnails for your saved objects or saved scenes so now you can definitely follow along your procedural steps so let's move on right so i really hope this tutorial might not be an hour but hey even if it's an hour you rig the car that you can easily manipulate and have three great animation tools or animation uh, attributes okay so now that we have the uh, trs controller now it's time for us to actually create those functions. Let's create the functions for the doors. Now for the door, because the door is double grouped, I want you to select their translate rotations and scales and even its visibility. Right mouse click hold and lock and hide selected. So that now when you select this controller, what well, you can't do is squiddly squat with this one. You can't move it. You can't rotate it. But I tell you what now you understand the power of double grouping see that's the controller and that's the group see how you can move it but if you select the controller you can't do anything so that's why we double group objects right when i well i just want to keep things clean select the controller in the shell that's why i'm giving this shelf to you right you're going to use the aa tool which is add attribute which you can easily find through modify add attribute so now we want to add that attribute right now, AA. We're going to call this one doors, door underscore open, right? And we're going to have some very basic uh, data types, such as a float, a minimum value of zero, and a maximum value of 10. And I'm going to show you why. Click add. Actually, let's do, uh, my apologies, my apologies, doors open. That's... Let's do door left. Right, door left. Click add. So now we have an attribute on this controller. Make sure the controller is selected, right, to add the attribute. That's actually really important. Okay, so if you select the controller, take a look at the attribute right here. Shift, while this is selected, right, shift middle mouse drag. So now you can slide in the panel from 0 to 10. Take a look at the channel box. 0, 10, 0, 10, 0, 10. Let's get it moving. All right, so let's do the same thing again. Select the controller. Let's call this one door underscore right. A minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 10, right? Because 0 is neutral, 10 is when the door opens. Click OK. So now we have two attributes, door left and door right. We're going to make sure that both of them are at zero for right now. All right. Okay, so we need to select 
There it is. We need to select that locator. See that locator right there? Right. You select it and rotate the locator. You'll notice that now the door is currently rotating the door. The door is rotating. The, that didn't make any sense. This is why you should never be in a rigging department. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's work on something, right? Let's work on functions. Select both locators, left and right. Open up the set driven keys. Now the set driven key is right here on that shelf. And if you can't find it, and if it's not there, just in case, right? Just select it while these two are so like. See, it automatically detected both of them. Okay, so let's do this. If you can't find the set driven key, you can go to animation, key, set driven key, and set. All right, did you find the set driven key? Right, as I said before, key, set driven key, set. You need to make sure that you select both of the locators before you select it. All right, so here it is, it's on your shelf anyways, and you'll notice that both locators are there. Yay, that's the first step. Then, shift select the doors controller and load as driver. All right, so we're going to work with the left side first. Select the left. We need four selection in here to get it started. Select doors left. Select the left door. And look at that. It's not named properly. So we're going to have a huge problem because we're not going to know what's left and what's right in the first in the first place. right? So I want to make sure that we do have that set. All right, so let's take a look at the look align group. So here's, there it is. So that's for the wheel, right? One is right and one is right again. So let's make sure that we uh, name this correctly. That's the right side and that's the left side. All right, so, sorry, right side, left side. So let's make sure that we rename this one to L, left door group. That's very important for us to establish uh, to establish a nice prefix hierarchy. Okay, so let's select both locators and load driven again. So now we have right and left. Okay, so let's do this again. Controller, door left, look align left door group. Take a look at its rotational value. Rotate the door. Take a look at the rotation that's been affected. It's going to be Y. So we want to make sure that we set a keyframe on Y. All right, so just in case if you've never used a set driven key, what it does is just creates a function, right? So it talks to you, basically tell you, hey, listen, here's the door left. Door left is at zero, neutral, nothing happens. Then select the group that is actually making the action, right? And you're going to select rotation Y. It's at neutral, right? So nothing's happening right now. Hit a keyframe. Then you're going to go back to the control, double left mouse click on that controller right here, right? It also selects your controller in the panel. And you're going to take the door left to a positive 10. You're going to select double left mouse click the local line left door group. And this time on this rotational value, I want you to rotate until the desired numerical value so i'm going to rotate it up to here yes it overlaps a little bit oh well who cares right you can also use different rotational values if you like but let's just keep it simple for right now here's a negative 70 let's keep it very simple with whole numbers right and set a keyframe so that now when you select your door controller you now have the door set right so negative 70 right let's remember that let's work on the other side Select in the door controller and now select the door right. So we're pretty much doing the same thing again. Neutral pose, double left mouse click, rotation Y is selected, keyframe. S double left mouse click on the controller, boost that to a 10, right? Double left mouse click. Let's make sure that we type negative 70. It should be a positive 70, actually. There it is. Right, so we have the doors opening now. Set a keyframe. 
See, one, two, three, four, four selection. Awesome. So now I can close this and test it. So select the controller. Here's the right side and here's the left side. Right. Do you see how there's some influence in there? All right, let's take care of that. No, I don't want to save it yet. Look at that. See that influence? Let's take care of that right now. All right, so let's make the car selective. Select the first mesh. Use the up arrow key so you can select the upper group. Hit control one. All right. Deselect everything and select the mesh again. All right, because you're definitely don't want you definitely don't want to select a group for this one. Hit F8. Marky select the vertices, and we're doing the same thing again from uh, the beginning of this tutorial, right? So now this is the right door JNT. Select the first vertice, scroll all the way down, shift select the last vertice, and type 1. And there you go. Right, so now you can hit F8, hit Control 1. You can test the door again. Right, left. Right. We still have a really small influence right here, as you can see. See that? Oh, what a nightmare. Let's hit Control 1. And let's make sure that this is set. Do the same procedural steps. Select it. Open the component editor right here. CPED. Right. This is the right side. Let's just make sure we pull the full one value. Right now I'm going fast for this one because we've done this like about I think like six times or something, right? Hit F8, hit control one, and we're gonna get started with the bike expression. So for the next step, we're going to create attributes for this controller. All right, so let's get started. Select the TRS controller, open up the add attribute tool right here, or simply go to display. Oh, I'm sorry, modify, add attribute. And we're going to create the first one. So the first one will be a float data type, the default setting. We're going to type revolve as is. Revolve. Right, capital R. And click add. Make sure that it's infinite, no numbers. Click add. So now we have the first attribute for this one. The next one, we're going to call this auto revolve. Auto underscore revolve. All right, and we're going to use a different data type. This will be anim. Select the green. Let's call this one manual. Hit enter. Select the blue text. We're going to call this one by control. Hit enter. Select the empty area right below the by control. See, it's selected, but it's empty. Right, and you're going to call this one by time. Hit enter. So that now you can click OK. And what you have right now is the revolve attribute. So shift middle mouse drag. You can see that it's infinite. That will be for the wheels to rotate manually. And then we have the three functions to animate, right? So one will be manual, one will be by control. When we move this controller, the wheels will rotate automatically. And then for the last one will be by time, so that when we play the timeline, the wheels will rotate, right? What well, much better ways to animate a car, right? So, so let's get ready to create this script or work with the bike expression. The bike expression is within your scripts folder, right? So if you take a look at your set project folder, yours is called car student, right? There it is. It's called bike expression. I'm going to use my file, right? So not yours. I can't give you the finished product. What do you think I am? All right. So let's do the uh, scripts folder and open up the bike expression. Double left mouse click and let's work with this expression really quick. So what you have here is basically uh, the whole thing to get to get it going. But first, we need to remove the prefixes and replace them with the ones that we have. 
like for the wheels and stuff. So let's let's do this. You're going to hit Control A and Control C. Okay, so you're basically copying everything for right now. And we're going to open the expression editor for right now also. Let's do EE. -E. So you're going to look for the tool EE, -E, which, is, which is called expression editor, and open it. All right, so we're going to create a new expression. We're going to call this one wheels. All right, under expression, I want you to paste the new script. Hit Control V. All right, and there you will have your script. Right, so um, it's got spaces, right? So if it bothers you, you can open the script editor and copy and paste it from there. It's fine, but just make sure that it's a mail tab, mail. Right, so you can paste it there so you can have a better visual, right, for the script. But you get it in here, so that's fine. Let's just use, here, let's just do this. Let's use the script editor first, right? So we're going to. I'm going to further explain exactly how this works. We have the front wheel right, front wheel left. They're all the same expressions, by the way, right? Just different prefixes. So we're going to make sure that we have all of that covered. All right, so let's understand exactly how this works. Revolve zero is basically manual, right? Revolve one is basically by control. And revolve two is basically by time. Right, so we're going to just change the prefixes. Right, so you see that front right tire group? Well, we're going to grab those prefixes. Let's open up the outliner. Right, and we're going to select the locators and replace it with these groups first. Right, so let's do this for right now. Just the locators. If this is the front wheel right, you're going to look for right front wheel, right here. Copy that prefix and replace it. Right front right tire. Front wheel group. Makes sense. So let's do this. Hit Control V. It's got a pretty long name, right? So this could be quite confusing. Why don't we just switch those prefixes right now, right? Let's do this. Let's just call it front wheel with the F like this. Front wheel. Actually, let's do this. Let's do this. I have an idea. I have an idea, guys. Why don't we just copy this, right? Copy it. And paste it there. Right, so that we have the same prefix as the script. So we don't really have to change that at all. Right, so that's already taken care of there. You see that? So why don't we just do this for all of them as well? Right, so here front little front left tire group. There it is. Copy it. Front left tire. There it is. And paste it. Hit enter. Let's do the same thing for the other one. Copy it. Hit control C. All right. And let's look for it. So rear right tire. Rear back wheel. Paste. There it is. We're going to look for the next one. Copy it. Rear left tire. There it is. Paste. All right, so I think we have all of them. One, two, three, four. So they all have the same prefix as this script. Awesome. So let's change the prefix for this controller. Right, TRS controller, just copy it, copy that prefix, and just replace it with this one. It says DeLorean rig, it's from the, an older tutorial for some of my classes. So we want to make sure that we uh, replace that prefix for everything that's called DeLorean main controller for the whole script. Hit control V, 
right? There it is. The Lorian main controller. Hit Control V. Hit Control V. You can follow along with me. There it is. The Lorian rig controller. Hit Control V, right? And let's do the same thing for the next one. And you can follow me along. I'm not going to pause it, so you can. Here it is. I'm going to make it bigger as well. All right. The Lorian main controller. Hit Control V. DeLorean main controller, hit control V. We're going to hit all of them and not miss any prefixes. So let's make sure we don't have any issues after. There it is, control V. Right, we're going to select the DeLorean main controller, control V. Trust me, it's so worth it after. Control V and control V again. All right, we're almost there. Control V, looks like I missed one right here. Control V. Control V. Here's the Lorian main controller again to Control V. And once again, all of them. Well, there's also a script that can do things like this, but that's fine. There it is. Right, so we have replaced all the prefixes. We've taken care of the names, right? So these have the same names as the script. And we replaced that DeLorean main controller by TRS controller. And the TRS controller represents this one. Right, so let's let's see if it works. I might get a little error, possibly, but I'm going to hit Control A and Control C. So once you do that, double check the script. Right, just make sure that all of these have been replaced properly and that these groups match with your locators. That's extremely important. You can't even miss like a lower cap or a high cap. That's how precise it is. We're going to open the expression editor again and let's type wheel one more time. Wheels. You're going to paste that expression and hit create. Right? When you hit create, you'll notice that if you don't have a syntax error, that means you've replaced those prefixes perfectly. Right? And now you can test it. So now if you close everything, right, select your controller, right, we're going to turn off the skeleton, turn on these right here, and see that it's by time, which means if you hit play, now your wheels are rotating. Right? If you select it by manual, right, you can select the revolve attribute, shift middle mouse, drag, and now it rotates manually. Right? Now, I can't really work on the uh, by controller because I have not set a constraint yet for this car, which means I need to basically group everything and apply it to this controller so let's do this right now right because if i move this controller well nothing happens and you can see that the locators are moving a little bit right see they're definitely understanding the script but nothing has been parented correctly yet all right so let's finish the rig i want you to select Shift select all four locators, right? And we're going to hit control G and we're going to call this one wheels underscore ROT underscore GRP. Wheels rotation group. All right. And then I want you to select the doors locators, just the locators only. And the car center joint at the same time. So all three of them are selected. We're going to hit control G again. And we're going to call this one doors underscore and center GRP. So now we have all groups set. Right. We're going to take the doors. Now pay very close attention. We're going to take the doors center shift select the TRS controller and hit the letter P for parenting. Right, we're going to take the root skeleton. 
Shift Select the TRS controller and hit the letter P. We're almost done. Now for the Move controller, I'm sorry, for the Wheels Rotation Group, which withholds all this script and such, right, parented to the joints, we're not going to use the P key, right? We're going to use a parent constraint and a scale constraint. So let me show you how this works. Select the controller, control select the wheels rotation group, go to constraints, open up its optional displays right here for parent, default, apply. Now do the same thing with scale, open up its optional display, right? Let's maintain offsets just for this one, even though it's not really quite that necessary, but hit apply. Right, so that what you're doing right now is allowing the car to work with the move controller. Let's see how well this works, right? If you select the controller, now you can move the car. Right, now you can scale the car. Right, and have their rotational values work with the translates. You see that? The locators are moving, so it's currently working. But I do have an issue. When I move my controller, just remember that if you select this controller, it's by a controller, right? So you can now animate in three different ways. How great is that, right? So we're going to take this to Unreal and show you exactly how this works. To export, of course. Okay, so we have by controller, manual, and by time. If you hit by time and hit play, well, now you have it play. Pretty cool, right? So let me show you how to adjust their speeds. So now you have the expression set. But the only problem is that when I select by controller, it's too slow. See that? It's way too slow. That's not going to understand the floor. Right? So I'm going to turn on the default material so that you can see exactly how these rotate. And we're going to open the expression editor again. And now we look for its filter. Selection by name. We're going to select the wheels. Right? Now, be very careful. Right? Remember that zero is manual and TRS control dot auto revolve one is by control. So that's, I'm sorry, that's manual and that's by control. See, I'm even getting lost myself. And on two right here, we're going to put 50. And we're going to see how this works. And we're going to put 50 on all of them. All right. So wherever there's a two, just type 50. Put a space bar, make it exactly alike. Two, replace it with 50. Scroll down. Two, 50. All right, and hit edit. All right, so now we're adjusting the speed from two to 50 value. So now when we rotate the car, right, now we're getting that really nice rotational value. And it kind of feels like the floor is nicely calibrated to uh, the wheels right right and it's up to you to actually work on those values but just make sure that you are very careful with the script that's all i have to say right and you can adjust any speeds for time and manual as well okay so that will be it for the rig now we need to do a little cleanup right so for the cleanup what you can do is go to show None, show, and locators. Select all of your locators and hit Control H so you can hide your locators to the scene. Let's go to show and all. So now we have this clean. We have one last thing to cover. See that controller? Well, that controller needs to follow this one. All right, so select the controller, shift select. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> not the controller, the top group. Right, select the top group for the door controllers, shift select the TRS, and hit the letter P, so that now when you move your car, the controller follows. And just remember that you animate with this controller, and you move the animation with the move controller as well. All right, so let's take care of the move controller for right now. We're going to take the TRS controller, shift select the move controller, and hit the letter P. So that now you can animate the car. There it is. It's a single chain hierarchy, right? So you can 
turn on the skeleton. So whenever you animate it, just save it. Let's say you're ready with the animation. Just select your skeleton. Select the mesh. Right. Make sure that you uh, bake the skeleton first and send it over. Right. Save multiple files, of course, for it, but and you'll send it to Unreal. But it is a single chain hierarchy and it does blend in Unreal. I hope that you uh, learned something out of this tutorial. Grab the car and have a lot of fun, even if you don't like rigging. I'll see you later. So why don't we just create an animation right now? We're going to select this one. And before I animate it, right, remember that I turned off the skeleton. And I'm going to save another file, save as. And I'm going to call this one car underscore zero two or zero three. Oh, let's make sure that I save it first, right? So save first. File save as. This will be car03. And I'm, I'm going to call this one baked. Right? So baked, not backed, baked underscore animation. Here we go. Let's capture a thumbnail. Capture, save, save as. Let's create an animation. Send it to Unreal right now. Right? Turn on the skeleton. Let's create an animation. Select your skeleton. Right? Uh, let's make sure that the auto revolve is right here by a controller so that when I move my controller, the wheels rotate. Right? So let's create this animation right now. Hit a keyframe on a one and we're going to go through 120. So this will be a really short animation. Let's just go to 200. Right? Let's have the car move forward. There it is. All right, so now if we take a look at the animation, hit play. Looks like my cached playback isn't currently working, but we hit play. There it is. The car is coming towards us. So we're going to make a very basic animation. All right. All right. So let's open the doors too, right? Let's open the doors back and forth. Select their attributes, right mouse click, key selected right here at one. And let's have the car open its doors. We're going to make some really weird animation, right? And then it's going to oh, close them again. Let's open it. Close and open it and close again. All right. So now that we have that covered, let's go back, play the animation. So now we have a crazy car with opening doors. We're going to stop the animation. All right. Just remember you're sacrificing this file for baking right because once you bake these uh skeletons and the parent constraints i'm trying to explain it to uh in a very basic way the parent constraints will no longer work you understand so because we have baked keys on these joints so you're going to select your skeleton right here right mouse click hold select the hierarchy and bake the animation go to edit keys and bake Shake and bake. Always remember that after baking the animation, select the skeleton, hit Shift P. Very important so that Unreal can understand exactly that moving translate value, right? So if I move it, now it'll recognize it. But if it's inside of this local space, it probably won't. So just remember to uh, select the root skeleton and unparent it. Hit Shift P so that the root skeleton is inside of your outliner. All right, so we can have something like this going. All right, so once you bake the animation, you can now select. Well, you already have the uh, skeleton selected, right? Select the uh, skeleton, right, and then select the car mesh, right. So if you want to select the car mesh, um, I know a pretty uh, a quick way to do it. Just going to show while, you know, the joints are selected. And just show polygons. That's it. All right. Control shift select the mesh. So now if you want to bring the joints back, everything is selected. Go to file. You can use the game exporter. I think it's a, a very accurate way for you to uh, export animation. Go to the plus sign right here. Let's make sure that we export selection. This will be called shot now you can name it whatever you want 
choose your directory path. It's underneath right here. Uh, I'm going to save this under assets and choose. So that will be my directory path, right? Let's name this. Let's call this one car underscore animation. And put an underscore right there. So, so everything is there. Everything is binded. Let's export this and we're going to open Unreal and import this animation. All right, we're going to wait for this. Might take some time because it is uh, uh, just a little bit heavy, right? We have a lot of uh, high polygons right here, so I'm pretty sure it's going to take like three minutes or something. Usually it goes fast, but... All right, so once in Unreal Engine, right, I uh, just have a basic scene. You can easily open it too. I'm using 5.02. You can use uh, other multiple versions. doesn't really matter. Uh, right mouse click in that empty area. I'm under content for right now. And let's open up a new folder. Let's call this one car underscore animation. All right, keep it clean inside of Unreal Engine. Right, uh, right mouse click hold. Or you can just drag and drop it, but show in Explorer. Right, so now I have that car animation open. That's just a folder from there. I like to just import these this way. I don't know why, but you can easily just open up your assets right now. And yeah, it's 33 MB, not that bad. Right, so you got two ways of doing this. You can take the car animation shot and just drag and drop it to the folder if you like. Or you can simply select the asset. There it is. Asset. There it is. And drag and drop it onto the file explorer. All right. So let's just do this. Uh, just drag and drop it for right now. All right. So we're going to import the car. Check the FEX import option. That's fine. Leave it as is. But do scroll down to make sure that import animation has been checked on. Right. If you don't do this, this will not work and import all. We're going to wait. It might take some time to import the animation, so I'll just pause it for right now. Once in Unreal, double check it. Car animation shot. Double left mouse click. So that will be the car. Check the animation. All right, and now you can easily drag and drop it there. Awesome. Scale it. I see something weird on the UVs right here. Probably just the channels or something, but... Yeah, so there you go. Goodbye, car. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you later. Until then.